I'm there. So I want to see your hand here. When I wave back to you, I knew that you have understood me. Please wave back. Okay? Happy Sabbath. Happy. You have answered the same. I'll say that uh, when I say happy Sabbath, you answer happy day. Happy Sabbath. Happy day. Happy day. Happy Sabbath. Hello, children. Hello, children. Hello, please wait back. And thank you a lot. I'm happy uh, to come here. Uh, I want to introduce myself. I'm Elder Richard Mutai from Nairobi Central Church. I'm deaf, but I was born many years ago, but I was hearing. From birth, growing up, I was hearing until to the age of 16 years, uh, when I was a youth. I became sick for four days only. For four days only. My sickness, I thought that it was malaria. So my parents, had, my parents advised me to take a medicine for four days. Then I'll be, I'll be okay. But uh, I changed and became deaf. My life changed. That was around uh, 44 years ago. 44 years ago. Through many challenges, God has led me to where I am today. Uh, from the time I changed and became deaf, I was very depressed. I thought of feeling myself. I never saw any future. What future was for me? Uh, through using my hands, people laughing at me. I thought, how would my future be? So I thought that I'm uh, very discouraged. I cried a lot. Uh, many times at night when I'm sleeping, I dream that uh, I'm hearing well. Then I, uh, I dream that I'm talking very well and enjoying to other people and laughing. But in the morning when I wake up, I find myself dead. So I get discouraged. I got discouraged a lot for a long time with uh, those many challenges. Through, my, through these many challenges, uh, this testimony I will give you in the afternoon. This problem and challenges, God has led me to where I am today. I'm happy because I am deaf. I'm not worried. Because the world, the World Health Organization, WHO, I say that uh, uh, in one in three people will become disabled before they reach 60 years old. The way you are seated there, you count yourself three of you. The way you are seated, the three of you. Uh, the time maybe when the three of you maybe you become disabled, uh, blind, maybe physical disability, you must get disabled. And this disability you must expect. Maybe it uh, may be disability of an eye, disability of an ear, depending with an old old age. Uh, walking that way is also a disability. Meaning that it's no more for something you are expecting in your life. For you to become a member of this club every time. It's not so much to send an application. No, it happens and you become a member of the club. When I changed and became deaf, after many years, I became an Adventist. After many challenges, around 15 years there at Karibangi, where I stayed, I, I, I started the deaf ministry at around 2009. When I was there at Karibangi, then I moved to Nairobi Central Church. Uh, we joined with another dev. We called other devs also to go and preach to other people. We started in town, Nairobi, and we went to another, other countries, went to South Africa, and other many countries. So I thank God for changing me to be 
Islam Chef and gave me a special message which I want which I want to share with you today. The time I start preaching, please, you must know that I'm giving my sermon through sign language. This sign language is a broken English. It's a broken English, which I sign, then the voice the voice interpreter gets it and changed it, changed, changed it to a language which you can understand. I know it's not easy for her, but uh, the challenge of uh, that I'll do is moving slowly. Maybe you don't look at your time and feel that you are hungry and uh, you see that the picture is taking long. Please, I'm asking you for your patience. How many agree to be patient? Okay, thank you a lot. Today, we are focusing on the spiritual food, not the stomach. But the stomach will eat later. We know that both are important. But at the end times, the signs, uh, the average people know that we are people of the prophet. We read the Bible, we don't read it fast, like the book of Daniel, Ezekiel there, prophecy, we don't read it fast and see that this is the last time you see war, you see different things happening. But we know that we love prophecy very well. And that is one of the prophets, the, the things that we understand a lot. This prophet's discussion is a special, is a special thing for this APM department because it's the sign of the end time. This ministry of Adventist Possibility Ministry uh, it started at around 2009. Uh, it, uh, it started with the name of Adventist Deaf Ministry, focusing on the deaf people, uh, who are over the 300 million deaf people in the world. And they don't know about the Sabbath, they don't know about the second coming of Christ, they know nothing. But you, you have yeah, you see here, we have Rewards, we have Swahili, we have Palaji. We have heard that we have heard the message of the Bible in your own language, the song books we have in your own language, the Bible we have in your own language. But this other group of three hundred million deaf people, they have they don't have their own Bible. The PC, the Rewall, we maybe we are three million, four million around there. But we have our own Bible. Uh, what about these 300 million men which they don't have their own Bible? And they are, this group is blocking us from going to heaven. So I thought about starting this ministry in there around 2009. Uh, from 2009, it was special, it was Adventist Day Ministry, then it changed to Special Needs Ministry. Then another, they are, later they added the blind, the widow and the widow, it became, it became an Adventist possibility ministry. Meaning that you and me in the church and the society and also the government all together have ignored this group and they have, they have a wrong attitude with them from Mombasa and from the, the time of Moses until now. That you see that this group is not important. We plan the up meetings, we plan pathfinders, we plan women ministry, we plan ammo. But we never think about this plan, the blind people, the deaf, the plain. We don't think about them. We only focus on people who are very strong and healthy. But this group who are being ignored are very important for you, for your spiritual growth for the church, to become ready for the second coming of Jesus Christ. Because you know, another point said what? That Jesus will never come until the time the church, this church, shows the face, the face of Christ. The time you show the face of Christ, Jesus will say that this church is mine and he will come and take us to heaven. But for you to show the face of Christ, you must practice the love, the care, and the support. 
this only will happen if you have uh, if you have members in your church who don't see who must be led to have the church who are using wheelchair. These people will come and bother you for the church, the church, and will make the church to change their hearts and mind, and they will copy the face of Christ. Uh, I've talked a lot, I've forgotten myself. So now uh, I want to give you the topic I want to share together with you. The topic is be open. Be open. Because all of us are blind and deaf. And our minds are closed and our hearts are also closed. That's the way that Jesus will never come, because our heart and mind are closed. That's why the topic of today is be open. Our verse is from Mark chapter 7, verse 32 to 34. Please read the gate for us. The Bible says, Mark 7, 32. And they bring unto him one that was deaf, and had an impediment in his speech. And they beseech him to put his hand upon him. And he took him aside from the magistrate and put his fingers into his ears, and his feet and touched his tongue. And looking up to heaven, he sighed, and said unto him, A father, that is, be perfect. Thank you a lot. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, the children of your Sama are ready to hear your word. You are for them to be. May this one change their life and become humble and copy the grace of Christ. We thank you for today, and may you use my hands and also the voice and interpreter to give him the power that we give the message to your children and we show the face of Christ. We are praying this is true in Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus was coming from another village. He was coming. When you reach near a place named Decapolis, Jesus came and that village, he knew that they have, they have heard that Jesus had the power of healing. So the time Jesus came, he remembered, the people remembered that there is one man who was there. So they took this man and brought him to Jesus and asked Jesus to lay his hands on him. Jesus, they knew that Jesus was doing miracles and all people knew that around this village. And Jesus wanted to teach them a lesson that they may learn and which is important for us today all do. First, the man was physically dead. And Jesus healed him. But through this love, that we know that we may care for one another who is disabled, who has disability. They said they brought this man to Jesus. The deaf man was very shocked. Why these two people are coming and holding me and dragging me and taking me to Jesus? He didn't understand anything, but these people surrounded him, dragging him to Jesus. They don't know, he don't know what he did wrong, but these men knew what they were, what they were doing. But it, they knew that what they are doing is for this man's benefit. How many people who are blind there, who are deaf there, they, they are being dragged down to church, to the house of God to do something for their own benefit. Maybe there is no none, but through this miracle, it will show that it will show us the way to care for this man, for this people. So they dragged this man to Jesus. And many people followed Jesus. So they dragged this man. Many people came to look. How Jesus will open this man? He will, will heal this man. 
So people were waiting for the miracles. So all were very amazed and very happy and expecting a miracle for an enjoyment. By the time they brought this man to Jesus, Jesus did few things. He took the man aside and separated from the multitude. Because Jesus wanted to make this man to be to become an example, not an enjoyment to other people. And they see that disability is for an enjoyment. So this man, Jesus knew this man had suffered in his life with his disability. This disability is not an enjoyment to give to other people to celebrate. So it's not good. So Jesus took this man, this deaf man, aside, separate from the multitude, where they were both alone, Jesus and this deaf man. After I took him separate from the multitude, he put his fingers on his ears. Because Jesus knew this man is dead and wanted to communicate, communicating to him it is impossible. So Jesus wanted to communicate to him using his hands and also preach the gospel to him. It's also a few signs, few signs which will give him help of his ears. So he took his fingers and put it in his ears and he told uh, this is a sign that uh, I want to solve the problem you have in your ears. Then Jesus did his part again, his part, and attached his thumb, the thumb of this man, meaning that Jesus wants to open what is blocking the thumb and to throw it away. That's why he touched his thumb aspect. Again, first he took his fingers to his ears. The man who is then understood that Jesus wants to open my ears. And he touched his, my thumb because he wants to remove the problem that is blocking my mouth to beat. So this man understood. And Jesus looked up to heaven. Jesus looked up to heaven because he's asking the deaf girl to come. This girl is there. And me and Jesus, but the dead man is this girl. So communicating to him is a problem. It's a problem. So this man there, Jesus wants to communicate the gospel of healing to him, the message of help to him. So Jesus did what to the man? He took his fingers and put to the man's ears. The man understood that Jesus wants to remove the problem of my ears. And also Jesus spat and touched his thumb. And he, meaning that he wants to remove the problem that is blocking him from speaking. First, he touched his ears, and second, he spat and touched his tongue. The, second, the third thing, Jesus looked up to heaven to show the man that the power of uh, healing him is not from him, but comes from above. Jesus looked up. In the dark culture, if a hearing person looks aside, also the deaf person looks aside. If he looks up, the deaf man will also copy the same thing. So, the time Jesus looked up, also the deaf man looked up to heaven. Because to show that the power is coming from above. And also, Jesus spoke and said, be open. The man looked up and looked at the mouth of Jesus. 
But if the Jesus looks down, it is impossible for a man. The man will also look down. So when Jesus looked up, it was clear that the power was coming from up, from above. And Jesus said, be open. And now if we do it again, Jesus touched his ear, touched his tongue and heart, and also looked up to heaven. And also the dead man looked up to heaven. And looked at Jesus' mouth and said, be open. It is understood that when he touched his ears and first touched his tongue, Jesus sighed. Means that his burden of disability was given to Jesus, and Jesus will give him rest. That's why Jesus sighed and looked up to heaven. After the man understood that the burden was given, his burden to give to Jesus, and Jesus looked up to heaven and said to the man, Be open. Are you open? <laughs> okay, thank you. Jesus communicated the good news, the gospel through healing this man who was deaf. And you forget how to care for these people. This deaf man, Jesus used sign language to communicate to him. But in the turn, sign language, how do we use it? If Jesus died for you, use sign language to communicate to a deaf person. Why not you? Outside there, we have 300 million deaf people outside there. You must copy the example of Jesus Christ. The man had physical disability of deafness, but maybe you have also physical disability, which is not worse than physical deafness. A person who is physically deaf can't hear the voice of God. In John chapter 8, chapter 8, verse 47. Says in John 8, 47, He that is of God heareth the God's words. He therefore hear them not, because he are not of God. Spiritual deafness is worse because you can't hear the voice of God. But a uh, deaf person, for example, this girl and me, we are physically deaf, but it's possible for us to hear the voice of God. How? How does it happen? Through sign language. Through sign language. Later we shall see how we hear the voice of God through sign language. But for now, for a person who is deaf, who is physically deaf is better than a person who is spiritually deaf. So you need to be open also to understand and hear the voice of God, which is coming through Jesus calling you and is asking you to care for his children who are broken. Physical deafness, physical deafness, if a person goes to hospital and be, and be given a hearing aid, that can assist you to hear. And you can also have an operation and can also help you, can help you to hear. If you don't hear the voice of Jesus Christ, it means that you are being spiritual. Because you are you are spiritual, you are spiritually dead. The girl and me, we are physical, we are physically dead, but we are not spiritually dead. So I'm asking for you this topic of today of being open. You pray for the Father in heaven to help you to be open.
Many people in church are not aware about the importance of people who are blind, who are dealing in the church. They don't understand. An example of today, you know, this is an ABM server. Uh, the people came and cleaned the church very well and planted the seed and also planted the seed. They knew that tomorrow is a special day. So they came on Friday and cleaned everything. Uh, in the morning, a deaf person comes. And we see that we have changed the dates, we are pulling things, we are, we are doing different things. So maybe a different woman there will want to have stretch to arrange this, this church. And these people are coming to destroy everything. These them people, they are coming to church to bother us. And they are changing everything. How is it possible? But this is a small thing. Imagine if I have... I have uh, maybe I had a blind person, I had a person with a wheelchair, a person who was walking with a, a stick, maybe at 30 days. What will you do if they come to this church? Will you disappear? No. It is important. And Jesus says that we must work together with them. But the problem is with you because you see, you don't hear, you don't see anything. The man who is deaf and the other who is blind, you see them, they have come to church. Maybe they want to support, then they go. But you are missing something which is hidden in there for your own benefit. An example, one day Jesus went to meet a man who was born blind. The story, the story we found it in John, John chapter 9. Verse 1 to 3. John chapter 9, verse 1 to 3. Bible says, And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin? This man who responds that he was born blind? Verse 3. Jesus answered, Neither had this man sinned nor his parents. But that the works of God should be made manifest in him. The disciples were they worked together with Jesus for a long time. For two years maybe. They saw all this man who was born blind. And they had a negative attitude about this man. These twelve disciples. They walked together, they ate with Jesus Christ together, they slept together with Jesus Christ. And they knew that Jesus is the Son of God. So they knew the time Jesus would go to heaven, uh, they would it'd be a key controlling the world. And these twelve disciples will sit, the six will sit on the left side, and the other will sit on the right side. They become them as the seers to control the world. And they thought that themselves they were very important people and they were also favored to sit in the big seats like next to the king. So they were very interested, they had a passion. When they saw this man who was born blind, uh, his hair is not very well combed, the cloth he had is very old, the shoes were torn, and he was walking like that. So they looked at this man. They thought this man must be very far from heaven, very far from the seat of God. They thought to themselves they were very privileged and they wanted to ask Jesus for come from Jesus. They asked Jesus, why is this man born like? Is it 